Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I came across an absolutely fascinating young lady who is running a, a coaching business and a website and posts regularly on social media about femininity. And her, her, her website's about intimacy, relationship, and attraction. She coaches people on, uh, on I guess, relationships. And, and she's got an interesting background. She's a lawyer, uh, so a very intelligent uh, lady. But she thinks that more traditional roles, um, and particularly femininity and, and masculinity, are something that we need to focus a little bit more on. And so I think this is going to be an interesting conversation today. Uh, Fareen Ash, welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. Hi. And excuse Milo if you hear him barking in the in the background. <laughs> no problem. So tell me, yeah, let me, what is this? coaching business that you do what do you do you 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 talk to people like me or 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 females and give us advice on what we got to do to be more feminine or more masculine actually yeah i do talk to a lot of men in terms of their relationships but what i primarily do is i'm sort of debunking this idea of what feminine femininity is and feminine like a woman's feminine nature is so there's this idea that you know to be feminine in our in you know to be a woman that is more feminine is the woman that is weak and you know she's looking for a man to sort of take control and things like that and yes there are dynamics where in the relationship a woman is looking for a man to sort of lead but a feminine woman is also a woman that is an entre- like is educated so for me as an example I'm a lawyer I'm an entrepreneur in my relationship, though, I don't lead with that, with that, I lead with my feminine essence. And so I think a lot of relationships today are failing and are not working because women have taken on this very dominant role in their relationship. So there's like two men in the relationship. So even if a woman is um, feminine looking, right, she dresses femininely, her energy and her essence, she's not providing enough femininity in the relationship with her partner. And so there's like a lack of intimacy, a lack of sex, there's no passion. And to me, relationships are, there needs to be an element of passion and attraction for it to be an intimate relationship. One, one would hope there's an element of, uh, of attraction and passion. There's no question. So, so what yeah. do you do if, if someone comes to you and wants some coaching, what's the typical situation? Someone who's got a relationship that's not working, or there's, there's yeah. two, as you say, two alpha masculine people in the relationship. Yeah. What do you do? You sit down well, and Okay. So there's like different, different dynamics. So, you know, someone can just book a call with me to provide a specific situation that's going on. So that's a man and a woman. And I sort of give insight. So I've spoken to many men that are in situations where they're sort of confused about what's going on in their relationship. So I, I deal with that. And then I also have single sessions with women, but my one-on-one work, one-on-one work with women, there's two types of women. So there's the single woman who's kind of in her forties or thirties, you know, she has a hard time attracting men or keeping men. So in that situation, what happens is women have a hard time accepting their femininity. Right. And a lot of that is because of our upbringing and, you know, there's beliefs about what it means to be feminine. There's a lot of inner work, there's survival issues going on. There's a lot of different things going on. So I'm doing sort of the inner work to help them sort of heal (laughs) And to allow themselves to um, feel comfortable expressing their feminine nature. So there's that, or there's the woman that's in the relationship. I have a client uh, that I worked with, um, Talia. She just got married. She's an amazing woman. She came to me two years ago, very shy, um, you know, very... um, I guess insecure and in her relationship, every she's with a masculine man, but everything was 50, 50. So, you know, he, there was no passion. There was no romance, you know, it was kind of a relationship. It was just like a, a partnership, but not an intimate dynamic. He wasn't attracted to her. So I work. How can you be in a relationship if you're not attracted to your partner? Oh my God. I don't, it's so rare for me to meet couples that I see are truly in love. You see couples. Seriously? Yeah. Pretty much everyone around me as well. Their dynamics are, well, we're in this relationship because we have kids. And so it's a partnership. But many women I speak to are not attracted to their partner and they've not had sex in a while. And the men are kind of just in that relationship because of the kids as well. It's very, very rare. And the relationships that I do succeed, I see succeeding are with the dynamic where the man is taking the masculine role and the woman is taking the feminine role. 
Really? So you think that relationships to be successful in your experience, the man has to take this masculine role and the female has to take the feminine role? Yes. 100%. What, what, so, why? So when I do, you, okay, just, I don't know if the viewers will even understand what masculine and feminine is. Do you, do you have an idea of what I'm speaking about when I, why, why don't you tell us what do you think masculine is? What do you think feminine is? Okay. So when I'm talking about masculine and feminine dynamics, we both have, we have men and women have both energies within them, right? We, in order to be a whole individual, we are expressing our feminine energy and we're expressing our masculine energy. A feminine woman is going to be expressing more of her feminine nature, but is going to have masculine energy within her to lead her life. Right. So as an example, my energy is very feminine. I'm feminine. It's a feeling like, hopefully you can feel that, but I lead my, so I lead my life with my feminine energy and I feel comfortable leading my life with my feminine energy because my masculine. So the masculine aspect of me is my confidence, my inner strength, my ability to move my life forward. Right. But I'm not leading in that. I'm not leading in that energy. So as a lawyer, as a lawyer, and even in what I was doing, uh, you know, as a lawyer, I have to lead in my masculine energy because I mean, I, I have to lead, I have to go to court. I have clients. Like I have to lead my life in that way. But when I would come home, I would try to move back into my feminine nature, which was a little bit hard to be honest. Cause I was also dating a lawyer at that point and we worked together. So it would, it would be difficult because I was working until seven o'clock at night. He was working until seven o'clock at night. And then I would come home. I would have to cook. I have to clean. I have to do all these things. So all these domestic duties that a woman, a woman is doing is not feminine. It's actually masculine. The doing energy is the masculine energy. Okay. In relationships and primarily in relationships, the masculine energy is the doer, the, um, you know, in terms of masculine energy, we're doing, we're moving things forward. We're leading in a relationship. What's happening in, in, in relationships is there's no polarity. So two people are leading, right? So even as early as courting, so I, you know, I, I'm very traditional. So I believe that there should be a courting process. You know, women are going on dating apps and I talk to all these men where, you know, they'll meet a woman on a dating app and on the second date, they're sleeping together already. Or the woman is initiating. The woman is, um, the woman is the one making plans for the dates. The woman is not able to relax. So relaxing and receiving is the feminine energy. Relaxing and receiving is the feminine energy. Really? Yeah. So as an example, uh, you know, when my partner or when I'm dating, I'm not initiating. <laughs> I'm receive. I'm looking to see, okay, what is the available option of men out here? Right. And I'm trusting that I'm a desirable woman and I can have anyone I want. That's the belief of a confident woman. So I don't need to make anything happen. The only thing I'm making happen is I'm going on a dating app, right? I have to take some action, right? You can't just like sit around and hope that a man falls from the sky. So I'm taking some action. But then after that, I'm waiting to see who is um, available and who is pursuing me, right? I'm you not- You want to be pursued? A feminine woman wants to be pursued? hundred <laughs> percent to this day. I'm looking for that in my partner. My partner is not pursuing if my partner is. Not, so pursuing is just a man that is taking the lead. He is the one that, um, so in early courtship, um, when I was dating and I was on dating apps, you know, men would initiate the conversations and I would respond. Right. So the feminine energy is the woman that is I'm respond. So it's not that I'm, I'm it's not that I'm not responding. It's not that I'm not excited. It's none of that. But I'm not initiating. There's no initiation by me. Right. And then, you know, based on that, I would look to see, is this a quality man? Is this a man that's educated? Is this a man that's handsome? Like what I, I know what I want. So again, that's my masculine energy. I this know is a I'm very saying. traditional view of, of men and women. Yeah. Is it not? It is. So that aspect is traditional, but the other ask, so the other coin is that I am ambitious. I am educated. I am, you know, successful, let's say. So but in my relationships and in dating, I'm traditional. This is this is a fascinating conversation. It's kind of interesting. And you've written two books, I understand. Yeah. 
Yeah. What, what men want. Yes. So and secrets of the feminine woman. Secrets of a feminine. We're going to come back after a quick uh, couple of messages and chat a little bit more about uh, being an intimacy relationship and attraction uh, coach and uh, and about your two books and about this interesting attitude of uh, of of masculinity and femininity and and really more traditional roles and uh, and understand a little bit more about uh, Farine Ash's uh, attitude. Stay with us everyone. We'll be back in just 2 minutes. Welcome back everyone to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. We're chatting tonight about masculinity and femininity. My guest is Farine Ash. She runs a uh, intimacy relationship and attraction coaching business and has a website and uh, and posts regularly on social media to try to inspire us, I guess, to find our masculine self and our feminine self. Uh, she's uh, got a fascinating background. Um, uh, Farine, you uh, have an honors graduate degree in honors uh, sociology, a postgraduate degree in law, and you're certified in gender intelligence and neuro-linguistic timeline therapy. What yeah. the heck? Is, yeah. is that gender intelligence and neuro linguistic timeline therapy? Yeah. So I did, um, I worked with a, a John Gray and, you know, Mars, Venus, men are from Venus, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Okay. So I got my coaching certification from them. I have an NLP training an NLP background. Yeah. And as I said, I was also a lawyer as well. So I am very, very much interested in the healing and the neurology of humans and why we are not embracing our natural essence. And this is, yeah. And this, it, it can Unleash become- Unleash your natural essence. Yeah, because women, in terms of our biology, we have more estrogen and we have, we are chemical, the chemicals that make a woman happy and fulfilled are estrogen and oxytocin. And we live in a world where there's, um, there's been, you know, women are masculinized, right? We live in a very high stressful world where it's not, it's not common anymore that women can stay home or do what I do, which is, you know, work in my purpose and something that's fulfilling to me. Women now have to work to live, right? So that's the masculine energy. Any single time you are working and you are working for the sole purpose of generating income, you are producing testosterone. And testosterone is a more masculine, it's it's a it's a masculine hormone. So this is kind of why it to know it, it's not a woman's fault, but what tends to happen is there's no awareness and women are producing all these hormones that are not um, akin to their natural nature, and they're not happy, right? This isn't so much the case with men, because not much has changed for men, right? Nothing has really changed for men in that, you know, men used to provide uh, back in the day, they used to hunt, and it's the same sort of idea now where men are working. It's women that have... There's all this, there's all this talk about, you know, you've got to be more empathetic, you've got to be more understanding, you've got to be... And, and some people are suggesting that men are challenged because they're expected to be more feminine. Okay. So my partner is a very masculine man. He's an athlete. My previous partner was also very masculine. He was a lawyer. The difference between them is that my partner today, my fiance has a loving side to him. Okay. The loving side is not, there's a side to him that is able to understand me. He's able to connect with me. He's um, loving. He's not good with his feelings. So he's not girly or feminine, but he's able to um, he's able to connect with me in a loving way. That is what women are looking for. I don't want a weak feminine man. And by the way, men are either in the extreme masculine side, so they have no feelings. I've dated men like that. And so someone described hard. that as toxic masculinity. Is that yeah. what? You're... Yes. Toxic masculinity is what we're seeing in the world. Toxic masculinity is a lack of empathy. It's force. It's coercion. It's manipulation. It's you have to do this or else. That's toxic masculinity. This is the world we live in, right? Why is and that the world we live in? You say that there's a lot more of that? Yeah. Like even in terms of what we're seeing in society where uh, there's a lot of force and manipulation. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. If you don't do this, you're going to lose your job. Anything that is forceful is not the healthy masculine. The healthy masculine is balanced. So balanced means 
I think you should do this because this is will be in the benefit of you, but you get to decide what is best for you. It's support. It's strength. It's it, that's the mask. That's the mask, true masculine energy. But because there's so much force and control in this environment and there's, you know, a lot of um, men also, there's this idea that you have to step on toes to get ahead and competition and in the extreme, anything that is the extreme is the toxic masculine. Women now also developed that within themselves to get ahead. And so women are also in the toxic masculine energy. Is there a toxic femininity? Yeah. Yeah. So the toxic femininity, well, there's two extremes. There's, well, the dark feminine or the woman that uses her body to get her needs met. A lot of people would say that's the toxic feminine. I would say that's the toxic masculine because anytime we're doing, anytime we're doing something to get something, that's the masculine energy. Doing to get is masculine energy. When there's an element of control or manipulation, that's where the toxicity comes The unhealthy feminine is the weak woman. And that's what society thinks of when they think of feminine energy. They think of this woman is weak. She's helpless. She has no opinions. um, You know, she's just looking for a man to take care of her. Right. So that's sort of the idea that we have of the feminine energy. But yet you say on your uh, website that uh, femininity is a, a woman's superpower. Yeah, and it that is. that femininity is far from weak. I, explain why femininity is a woman's superpower. Well, because I lead my life in my feminine energy, which is my natural energy, feminine energy attracts everything to you. I don't make anything happen. I am myself. I lead my life from my heart, which is the feminine energy. And um, I lead my life in my natural essence. So I don't have to force or make anything happen. I attract everything to me, even this interview, right? My clients, I've not paid for ads. I've not done anything. When I left law and I started this business, I started getting clients right away. In fact, my income is replaced. It's, It's as if I never left law. When a woman learns how to tap into her feminine energy and is leading life from her feminine nature, she becomes very magnetic. She's magnetic. <laughs> there's something she's magnetic. About her. Yeah, there's like a magnetic energy. Like she's there's something about her that pulls people into her, and it's a feeling. And it's because the heart creates a, a wider um, a wider field, right? And so a woman that's operating from her feminine energy is more in her heart. And therefore there's a wider field of intelligence around her. And so she's able to draw everything into her versus making things happen, which is the masculine energy. So masculine energy is not leading life from their heart. My partner is not sitting here leading, being attractive. My partner is making things happen in his life. Would you mind reading this, this quote on your website about, uh, about, dropping being comfortable in 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 heart uh a woman's level of femininity will allow a man to comfortably drop into his heart her ability to be open authentic vulnerable playful and free in who she is will attract a man that will emanate the same level of confidence ultimately we are seeking wholeness and on a deeper level we'll meet with partners that will help us integrate our non-dominant energy so Do you want me to continue the quote? Yeah, please. Okay. The more that we have healed and peeled back the layers that keep us from who we naturally are, the faster we will attract a partner that will be of complement to who we are. This is interesting. So what you're saying is that, uh, that a more feminine woman will allow a man to be a little bit more feminine, that he will comfortably drop into his heart, that, that he'll, uh, it gives him permission to be more, I guess, um, open, authentic, vulnerable, playful, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just go back to my partner. So he, men, men, masculine men live more in their head, right? They don't live in their body. They're in their head. They're in their mind. They are very structured. They're very routine. They're very disciplined. When they're with a woman that is, you know, feminine, she is more, she's present. She's playful. So when I'm with my partner and I'm with the kids, I'm happy. I'm energetic. I'm, you know, I'm vulnerable. I'm communicating my feelings. I'm, I'm very open. And so because I'm very open, it inspires him to also dip into his heart 
and to be open and present. And um, he's able to experience that side of him. And he's not able to do that when he's not with me because he's living up here. So if I came to you or someone came to you with, uh, with uh, some questions about their, their relationship or their masculinity or their femininity, what would you do? Like, what's your process? It depends every client. So this is with me, every client, I don't have a process. It's every person is different. And so I tailor what the person needs based on that person specific situation. So, um, you know, a lot of men will come to me and it'll generally be about a specific situation. I'm not able to, um, you know, I want this woman, I'm not able to attract her. And then he'll tell me the specific specifics of the the situation. And then I'll sort of give him advice about his own, what he's doing and his own level of um, masculinity, let's say, or how he's approaching the dating situation. So it's very specific to the person. I can't tell you what the process is because it's a very specialized process. And so even with me and men I've worked with, or people I've worked with, they'll tell you that when they get on a call with me, it's very unique to them. It's not um, there's no A, B, or C that happened. And, and are most of your clients people that are dating or are they relationships that aren't working or or what? Both. Both. My one-on-one clients are women that are have not been married and um, are having difficulties attracting a man that is more masculine. That's usually what's going on in my one-on-one clients. So women that are successful, um, women that have a hard time attracting a man because as soon as they attract a man and they these women want a masculine man (laughs) they want a man that is strong they don't want a feminine man but they they tend to push these men away because Because they're they're not feminine enough or because what yeah essentially they're not feminine they're very dominant and so with masculine energy men healthy men healthy men don't healthy men subconsciously want to lead relationships they want to be with a woman that they have to work for feels good about herself and they have to win over. So when a woman is the one that is initiating and is very dominant and is very um, desperate, let's say masculine men will get turned off. And then these are the men that tend to ghost. They kind of just disappear. Really? That's interesting. I, I thought that, you know, you hear all the time that men want women that initiate. That's not true. Feminine men feminine men and even masculine men that say that because there's not an awareness it's their ego saying that so a lot of men that I speak to even my partner what ha- this is what happens because there's no awareness sometimes what will happen is a man will meet a woman and the woman will be goo goo gaga over him oh my god and like you know inflate his ego and the wo- the man will think oh this is nice I'm getting all this attention and then he'll get serious with her and then he'll realize wow this is not what I wanted this is not what I wanted because at his core he wants a woman that feels good about herself and he's able to lead so you know healthy men don't want that situation they get into that situation because they're very much in their ego and the ego is going to like attention right the ego is going to like attention yeah but these are the men that end up in relationships, have kids with women, they're not happy, you know, and then there's infidelity and, and things like that happen because they didn't take their, that's why it's really important to take your time in dating. You don't want to meet someone and just sleep with them. You don't want to meet someone and get physical with them because that's lust. That's trauma bonding. You want to get to know someone. You want to see, do you have, do we have the same values and you want to allow a buildup to happen. So for me, I want to see how masculine is a man? Is he going to pursue me? What's his level of confidence? Because confidence is a masculine trait. If a man meets me and he's all Google Gaga right away without knowing me, I'm not, I'm not attracted to that. Right. I want a man that you say you want to be pursued. I want to be pursued. I don't want to be chased. What's the difference between being pursued and chased? Chase, chasing is unhealthy. Chasing comes from insecurity. Chasing is I see a woman. Oh my God, I want this woman. And it's very fast, right? It's very fast. It's messaging all the time. It's, you know, uh, when I, when I would go on dating apps and I would meet men that would want to fly me to Paris and take me to nice restaurants very fast. That's the toxic masculine that's chasing. That's coming from insecurity. That's coming from I I want this person for this reason. Pursuing is, oh, I like this woman. There's something about her. And then gradually, you know, setting up dates once a week. And I talk about this in the books, setting up dates once a week. Um, Not really. We, my partner and I didn't talk much before our dates. 
you know, he would set up dates, we would see each other once a week, and then it would grow, it would build. And of course, my partner also wanted to get physical with me, he's a man, um, but I was not ready. And I would tell him that and I was looking to see his reaction. And he was patient. So it was three months, <laughs> three months before I think I even kissed him. And he was patient and his patience and level of confidence within himself was very attractive to me. Um, and that is when I knew there was something different about him. And he's someone that I think is strong, that even if we have challenges in life, he's going to, he has it, he's going to be able to handle it. He's not afraid of, you know, putting work in to get something that is worthwhile. Use the term trauma bond. What's that? It's when we don't feel good about ourselves and when we feel insecure and we don't, we have not healed from our past and we ultimately can't be alone and we don't feel good on our own. And so we end up meeting someone that also experiences the same thing because like attracts like, we're always going to attract a level of who we are, right? And that person also doesn't feel good in who they are. That person doesn't want to be alone. And both people sort of get move into the relationship based on their insecurities and their wounding versus their true essence, their, who they are. This is a fascinating conversation. It really is. And I want to talk a little bit about some of your books and how you got into this uh, interesting, different line of business after being a lawyer. We're going to take a break for some messages and be back in just two minutes with Farina Ash talking about uh, her interpretation of true femininity and true masculinity and uh, some more traditional sort of values and outlooks than um, what you hear about um, in the media all the time. Stay with us, everyone. Back in two. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. I'm having a really interesting chat tonight. Um, I'm enjoying it with Farine Ash, who is was a lawyer and gave that up to become a, uh, a coach in femininity, in relationships, in intimacy, um, and uh, masculinity. And, and she has what I think I would describe and what I think a lot of people would describe as a far more traditional view of, of men and women, femininity and masculinity, but it seems to, to work. Uh, Farin, how'd you ever get into this? If you were you know, a, a successful lawyer, how'd you get into being a relationship coach? Honestly, it was very, um, it was very serendipitous. I, I guess I would say it's not something I ever thought about. I never in a million years thought, oh, I'm going to leave the practice of law to be a dating coach. Um, I, I think for me, what happened is I've had a very traumatic upbringing. You know, I lived on the streets. I've attempted suicide. I had a very difficult life. <laughs> and You attempted when, suicide, really? Yeah. I, I had a very difficult, I lived, I lived in government housing with my mom. My dad wasn't in the picture and I had a very difficult life. And so I was in survival for a, a really um, a good portion of my life. My dad is very, my dad is the unhealthy masculine and my mom was the unhealthy feminine. So my mom's in government housing. You know, she's very, you know, I would go to school, I would go to university and we would get food, you know, the night before. And I would come outside and she lived in government housing and she would eat everything. And so, and my mom didn't know how to regulate her emotions. And it was very difficult for me. And my dad, on the other extreme, had no emotions. And he would put me down a lot as a child. So as a, this, is, this is how we become sort of messed up, so to say. As a child, we're perfect. And, you know, for me, I was a very bubbly, happy child. And my father would say, say things to me like, you know, don't smile at strangers. You're going to make be made fun of. My dad was very tough on me with school. He was very hard on me. He wasn't that way with my sister, but he was very hard on me. And so I wasn't getting that. I wasn't getting the right type of love from my dad. And I couldn't, I wasn't getting the right modeling from my mom because with my mom, I had to take care of her. And so for a good portion of my life, you know, and then I, I ran away, I attempted suicide and, you know, eventually I put myself through law school and I just wanted to get successful. Like that was my main thing. I didn't want to be poor and I wanted to make something of myself because I've not had any sort of support. And so I went into law and yeah, I was good at it. You know, I, you know, I make multiple six figures and it was great. But at some point I, I felt like this is not for me. And I started doing a lot of personal development um, courses, let's say my ex, um, who was also a lawyer was very much like my father. And so I started doing this personal, you know, this personal work and I would, 
I realized that the dynamic that I had with my ex was very much, was very similar to the dynamic that my mom and my dad had. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And so this is one intergenerational uh, copying. Yeah, it is because we're, the universe is always going to bring us someone that the universe brings things to us to help us heal and to help us become our true self. And when I was with my ex, my ex would, he was my coach. Let's say he would point out behaviors in me that I had no awareness. I had no idea what I was doing, but I, I, I started, I was behaving in ways that my mother would behave at times. And, and I didn't know this because there was no awareness. And so I started embarking in this own, you know, my own personal work. I started healing from the past, started looking at, you know, why I attempted suicide. I started looking at my background and everything. And one day I, I just, I felt I, it was time to leave law. And I, and I started working, um, you know, I started doing, you know, seminars like Tony Robbins and things like that. And I, I started like in one of the programs that I did, you know, one of the, uh, the women, she would ask me to, um, speak to, you know, she would ask me to speak to the, her clients and I started doing that. And at this point I was in my master's program. So I was in a master's program at York university, um, for what was the program for? I don't remember. It was a postgraduate degree. I was already a lawyer at this point because I wanted to move into policy. But then I started doing this work on the side, um, helping women in terms of attraction and dating. And I was like, wow, I, I really love this. I'm good at this. Cause innately I've always been interested in relationships. And one thing led to the other. Like I just decided to move forward in this direction. I told my boss, like, look, I'm leaving in a year. Um, I started to close my files out and I just decided to take a leap of faith. And there was a lot of fear. Um, I think 2000, 2019, December is 2000, December, 2019 is when I, I knew I was going to leave in 2020. And I started experiencing a lot of fear because of, again, I was poor <laughs> at one point I had no money and now I'm leaving the law firm. Um, I was with my ex at that point, but there was no safety there. Was he supportive in your decision to leave law and start this relationship coaching business? He was. I have to say he was, um, he was also leaving the, the firm to, he, he started his own law practice now. Um, he didn't think that I would become successful so fast. So I had that belief in me that I would, I had no idea how. That's the masculine crazy. part of you, that confidence. Yeah. I was like, I used to tell my boss, I would tell my boss, I would say, I'm going to do better in what I do than I'm doing as a lawyer. And I had no idea that that was going to be true. And I just believed in myself. But as the time got closer, I started to, you know, I would wake up with panic attacks because of course, like you, the trauma lives in you. If you're poor, you know, I had no money. And even though I had savings at this point, I was very scared, but my intuition just said, you have to do this. You just, it's time to close that chapter. And I left law, my partner and I at that time, broke up and the pandemic happened and January, 2020 was when I first, when I got my first high ticket client. And I mean, the rest is history. I, Fantastic. you know, I'm, yeah, you, you, you've written this book, what men want. Um, and it's the ultimate uh, guide to a masculine man's heart. Tell me what do men want? Well, men want a woman that is ambitious that is able to communicate her needs, that has opinions, that is strong, that is able to um, speak up for herself, right? Uh, you know, I have- That sounds like a masculine woman. But they want a woman that leads in her feminine energy. So in my relationship with my partner, I don't bring work into my relationship. I prioritize him. Even in terms of this interview, there were times when, oh, the kids had something and I prioritize my relationship. I don't put business in front of my relationship and the kids, right? My main concern in life is love and my, my connection with my partner. When I'm with my partner, I don't think about work. I'm completely present, happy, loving, and um, you know, supportive of him my, the strong part of me comes in if he's being a jerk, because sometimes men are jerks. <laughs> and so I mean, what to... men are jerks. You're kidding. Yes, men are jerks. I would say they're oblivious sometimes, but sometimes, so I'm able to speak up for myself. I'm able, I'm strong, right? Like I'm, I'm able to hold him accountable when, when that needs to happen 
but I don't do it in a way that's, ima- I don't emasculate him. So men you don't men, emasculate him. What does that mean? Met a lot of women today emasculate men. So they're, t- they tell him, I don't tell my partner what to do. I don't force him into anything. I trust his leadership. I trust that he knows what he's doing for us in our relationship. Although I'll give him my opinion. Um, I don't tell him what to do. I don't put him down. I don't lead in our, in our life. Right. So a man wants that a man wants a woman that can trust his leadership and can trust that he has it, you know, that she's safe and he has it. And I, I trust my partner in that way. And so men want that. And men want a woman that can relax into him and relax and know that, okay, I have it. And, you know, she trusts that I have it. Men don't want bitches. Yes. They do want bitches. Okay. Men don't want bitches. So this is where the misconception is. Uh, what do we think of a bitch? We think of a bitch as someone that's closed and cold and um, very hard to get. I am not closed and cold or hard to get. I am hard to get in an organic way, meaning I know myself, I trust myself, I have high self-esteem. So you have to work for me, but it's not coming from I'm playing a game and being a bitch so that you fall all over me. So why did why did this book uh, uh, Why Men Love Bitches and, and this sort of attitude uh, take take hold? It's a, mis- a misconception you suggest. Well, it, the idea is very the idea is right in terms of I've read that book. The idea is very in fact you know someone um, that read both books actually gave a review for my book as well. The idea is right in terms of why do men love bitches? Because men want a challenge. Men want a challenge. <laughs> Masculine men want a woman that they can get. This is primarily also why masculine men are attracted to masculine women in the beginning, because masculine women are a challenge. You know, the needy woman, the woman that's very needy and desperate and whiny, that is the unhealthy feminine energy, right? So there's something about masculine women that men like, which is she presents as a challenge. Men don't want- But they don't like that long-term. Is that what you're saying? Not- For a while. Not in the way, not if it's coming from a space of the woman, if her energy is closed and she's mad all the time, right? So when you think of a bitch, you think that her her energy is very, like, she's mean. It's aggressive and mean, right? And tough. I'm not aggressive, mean, and tough, right? I'm very- But you're confident. confident. I'm confident. Yeah. It's an energy thing. It's a feeling. So- if I'm in an environment like this, I'm going to be a little bit stronger because of course, this is my job. This is what I do, but I'm not in my relationship. I'm not necessarily, I'm not a bitch unless I have to be. So if my partner is, um, if my partner does something unintentionally or does something, um, you know, sometimes men can be dumb. That side of me will come in, but that side of me will only come in if he's defensive or angry. Right. If he becomes defensive and angry or anything like that um, for no reason, or I don't think that there's a reason for him to be like that, he's going to see a side of me he's not going to like, <laughs> right? But it doesn't come out unless I'm not respected. And, and then you wrote the second book about the secrets of the feminine woman revealed. Tell me yeah. what are the secrets of the feminine woman? Well, in Secrets of the Feminine Woman, I talk about what, like the tenets of femininity. And um, I talk, that book is me. So Secrets of the Feminine Woman, I hold close to my heart because it really is about me. And I talk about what it means to be feminine. I talk about, you know, one concept right now, which I just talked about, which is uh, she's able, she's reasonable until she's not. So a woman that's feminine is I'm very reasonable, but but at some point I'm not. So, and that is where the attractiveness comes in for masculine man, because he knows I can't get away with things with her. Right. I can't get away. And so that's where she poses as a natural challenge. These uh, books, how do I get them? So they're on my website. You can get them on my website for now. Uh, eventually I will make um, them available on Amazon. I'm not there yet. <laughs> and so right now, if anyone wants them, they can just order it on the website. Was it uh, therapeutic or fun or, or, or how was it uh, writing these? 
It was good. It, it was very um, soul inspired. So when you read the books, especially Secrets of the Feminine Woman, for women, it's going to evoke a feeling in you. And that's a lot of my clients that have read this book as well. And other people that have read it, that's what they say, where femininity is a feeling. It's not something that can be intellectualized or it's even hard for me to communicate it because it's a feeling it's a feeling you'll get from a woman so the book is going to give you that um yeah it was very it was very natural and it came out very quick because it, it was me and so it was very interesting in fact I go back and I read it sometimes and I'm just like oh I wrote that <laughs> because it was very when, when did you write them just a little while ago or last year and uh, the response has been good. Yeah, very good. Um, I need to get better at promoting myself. So in time, that will. Ha- I kind of let things happen organically, um, but I need to get better at promoting them and myself, which I will. You post on uh, Instagram on a on a fairly regular basis. You know, inspirational uh, comments about your uh, your beliefs. Um, why do you do that? Yeah, well, Facebook is actually my primary gateway for expression of what I do. And um, I, I, you know, I run my business basically on Facebook, and then I would go and like repurpose that and put that on Instagram. Um, So yeah, it's just kind of another avenue of sort of getting my message out. And I think social media is such a great platform to do that. Um, I'm moving more into YouTube now and kind of creating videos to help people understand um, femininity and masculine feminine polarity and attraction and how they can sort of develop that in their own relationships. I think that not a lot of people are teaching this in the right way. I found this uh, one quote uh, that uh, you put in uh, really quite interesting. Women reject their femininity yet expect to be treated femininely. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah, well, women want to be pursued. Women say, well, there's no masculine men out there. But then when I speak with them and in terms of their own energy, they're very masculine. So they're rejecting. You cannot have it both ways, right? If you want a masculine energy man, you have to adopt your feminine energy. You have to accept your feminine nature. And women have, um, there's so many misconceptions about what it means to be feminine. Women reject that side of themselves because they think, again, to be feminine is to be weak. So again, I ask you, do I look weak to you? I am not weak, <laughs> right? You don't You don't need to be weak to be feminine. You could be feminine and strong, but the strength comes from not having to protect yourself, right? The strength comes, it's an internal strength. That means I can show up in the world feminine, I can be myself, and I can handle myself if something comes at me that doesn't feel good. Rejecting our femininity is I'm not going to show up in the world as who I am. I'm scared. I'm going to put the shield on and I'm going to be closed. I'm going to be closed. But men, please come, please come and pursue me. And then you wrote, men need pain to wake up and feel the gravity of their decisions. Coddling him like a child will keep him from seeing you as his dream girl. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So in terms of pain and in terms of masculinity and what happens in a lot of relationships is Masculine energy needs pain and masculine men um, need to feel that a woman is able to walk away. And so even with women and a lot of women I coach, they're so heavily pursuing a man. They don't allow a man to um, sort of one concept is leaning back. They don't. If a man is not moving into engagement or or moving the relationship forward, instead of communicating to him, look, this is where I'm in my, where I'm at in my life. Like, I love you. I love our relationship. But if this is not something you're ready for, um, then I need to end this relationship, right? That's a healthy response to a man not moving things forward. What women will do is they're so scared to say that because they're so scared to let him go. And then in them not walking away, A man can't experience what it's like without her. He doesn't experience any pain. And so he's always in this kind of, um, he's, he's always, and I deal with many women like this, actually a client of mine, um, that, you know, she wanted to get engaged and, you know, she was always pushing him forward in the relationship. And I would always say to her, give him space, move away from the relationship, give him space if this is what you want. And she wouldn't do that. She would convince him, she would coddle him. And now they're broken up and it's been over a month and he hasn't even reached out. 
And the reason he hasn't reached out is he doesn't experience any pain of not being with her because he knows that she's so readily available. So again, feminine men want that. Feminine men want to be pushed because that's what their mothers did. They want that. They want a woman that will control, lead, plan, do everything for them. So a mommy's boy is looking for a mother replacement? 100%. Uh, A feminine. So even when I do my posts and it's so interesting, I do videos now and like the, so YouTube, I'll get a lot of um, amazing men that support. They're like, yes, yes. Everything you're saying. It's it's so true. But then on Facebook, I'll get the man, you know, these men that get triggered by what I say. And the reason for that is because they want a woman to pursue them. I'm saying a man should pursue a man. A woman should lean back. Um, A woman should, you know, when I say lean back, I don't mean not appreciate a man, appreciate him. Like I appreciate my partner. My message is don't pursue him. Like let him win you over. But a lot of men will get triggered by that because men don't want to put the work. Feminine men don't want to put the work in. They, they are not confident in themselves and they want a woman to sort of do the work for him. What a fascinating conversation. What a fascinating business that you've created for yourself. And, and it's interesting that you're you know, you admit it, your far more traditional uh, point of view in regards to men and women has some resonance, uh, obviously. And uh, and in this world where we're all challenged and, and you know, we've heard comments about uh, toxic uh, masculinity and, uh, and and females that, you know, want to be walked over and uh, yeah. and narcissism and uh, and and uh, what do you what do you call it about uh, uh, about uh, trauma bonding, stuff like that. You're effectively saying be men or be women, be feminine or be masculine. Yeah, that's it. Lead with your core energy is what I'm saying. Lead with your core energy and you will find someone that will also lead with their core energy and you will be in a balanced, healthy, conscious relationship. We're going to take a break and come back in two minutes with some concluding comments with Farine Ash. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, everyone to the Brian Crumby Radio while we're on second and 60. I'm having a really enjoyable, interesting time chatting with Farina Ash. Uh, she is a relationship intimacy coach. She used to be a lawyer. She gave that up. Uh, very successful legal career to, to, to help people in dating and relationships, etc. And she's got a very traditional uh, point of view in regards to um, masculinity and femininity, which is kind of fun. Um, Free, let me ask you, you know, I think that, you know, there, there's so many females that are now successful in business, successful in careers, and, and, and hopefully men are still too. Um, what happens when, when both a man and a female are successful in business, uh, and they try to get together and they try to have a relationship? Is that going to work if they're both, you know, very masculine, like, you know, and, 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 and confident and, and successful in the careers? Or is that a recipe for disaster? What happens in those types of situations? If a woman is not in her feminine, they're going to not have sex anymore. (laughs) So if she's not feminine in the relationship. So what tends to happen with masculine men is because masculine men want a confident, successful, driven woman, right? I'll, I'll relate with a lot of men because men like that about me, right? I have the intellect. I'm smart. I'm educated. What will happen is if a woman, so in the relationship, I'm not dominant, meaning If a woman doesn't embrace her feminine essence, a man's not going to want to have sex with her anymore. He's not going to be attracted to her. So what I mean by that- Even if she's attractive, even if she's beautiful. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They've they've still got to be feminine. If a man is masculine in his energy, subconsciously, he's going to want to take her. And a woman is going to want to be taken. I want to be taken by my partner. I want him to- take control and take me. If I want to take me, I can't dominate him. I can't say, I can't be the aggressor. My partner is the aggressor. The reason he's the aggressor. And, you know, even in my previous relationship, seven years, the attraction never died. The reason for that is in my intimate relationships, the man is the man, the man is the aggressor. So if a woman approaches sex and her relationship, the way she's approaching business, a man, it doesn't matter how beautiful she is, doesn't matter it's how turned off. She is, a man is going to be turned off. And I've experienced this actually with my clients where women that I work with are very dominant. Men will cheat because if a man is not with a woman that's feminine, 
it's a subconscious need. He's going to gravitate towards women that have that femininity, that give a man that femininity, right? That are warm, loving, appreciative. They they don't want to be with a, a man, a woman that's also a man in in her energy. So even if a woman is very attractive, slender, you know, beautiful body, if she is dominant, so if she is, if she if she's the aggressor in sex, right? Especially even in the beginning, right? It's a it's one thing if at this point I will initiate with my partner here and there, right? I never have a chance to because he's always he always wants it, right? I mean, I always tell him, babe, be a little bit less. You're too easy. Like, let me want you. But he wants me all the time because I'm very feminine. If a man is with a woman that is very dominant in the bedroom and initiates sex very quickly, something is going to turn him off. He might not be able to, he might not be able to finish. He might not, he might not even, um, he might not even get turned on. So or if, even if gets, she's even if she's beautiful, even if she's matter. attractive, even if she's slender, even if she's well, you know, smart, funny, wonderful, and all that kind of stuff. You say doesn't matter. It won't work just because she's too confident, too masculine. It's not too confident. It's too masculine. I'm very confident. I'm a very confident person. I don't care what anyone says about me. I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine. That's confidence. I'm not dominant though. Can you feel the difference? I'm confident, but I'm not dominant. I'm not an aggressor right? Do you, do you feel the difference in so, that? So in that kind of a situation, what would you tell the female to do? I would say, if you want to be with a feminine man, be you have to you know are. yourself. If you want to be with a feminine man, if you want to be who you are and you want to be the aggressor, if you want to take the lead in relationships, if you want to take the man, the man role, then you have to be with a man that's feminine because there needs to be a masculine and a feminine. But those types of females don't want to be with a feminine yeah, uh, man. and they want to be with a, a masculine man. Yeah. Then in the relationships, you have to adopt more of the feminine role, meaning you have to receive him. You have to be um, less dominant. You have to provide him with appreciation and playfulness. And you have to be provocative in a, you know, in a subtle way, you have to lean back in your sexual energy a little bit, let him lean forward in the sexual energy. And then you want to receive him because that's what masculine energy men want. What a fascinating conversation. This has been really interesting. Thank you so much for, uh, for chatting with us. If people want to uh, check you out, uh, buy your book, uh, maybe uh, try to talk to you from a relationship standpoint, how do they do that? So they can go on my website, farinash.com. Find me on Facebook, Farine Ash. Um, I believe it's just Farine Ash on Facebook. I'm always posting content there. My Instagram is also Farine Ash. But more importantly, I'm moving into YouTube now. So, you know, definitely subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in these conversations, I'm going to be doing, posting way more content on YouTube, um, you know, about masculine and feminine energy and relationships, et cetera. Well, we should chat again sometime. This has been yeah. a lot of fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's our show for tonight, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I remind you, I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online at www.saga960m.ca and all my podcasts and videos are available on my website, briancrombie.com. And I've got my own YouTube channel. So please, free and subscribe to it. Uh, Brian Crombie will. Radio Hour. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.